Something's been weighing on me for a few weeks. And I want to run it by you guys because I don't know if I got scammed or if I was maybe a little bit too harsh. Something kind of weird happened. Uh, it wasn't just one thing. It was a series of events. And so I want to lay those out in front of you. And then you can tell me, what do you think happened? It was an eBay sale, a sports card sale, the kind of thing that I do thousands of. And a few things about this just struck me as kind of odd. And then it just went malicious. The buyer, we'll call him Tony. Tony lives in North Carolina. Um, I may have gone and found his LinkedIn because I, when, when someone talks to me like he talked to me, I just want to know what their background is. You know, am I the one who's being a little bit paranoid, a little bit oversensitive, or is this person really um, a bad actor? You know, we'll call him that. There's a lot of other things I could have called him, but let's, uh, let's keep this video PG. <laughs> uh, so I sell Tony a card. It was a, a Tony Romo rookie card, like 15 bucks, a cheap card. And I shipped it eBay standard envelope, which um, just goes in an envelope and it takes like a week to get to you. And so I ship it out, I put it in a top loader, I make sure it's safe and secure, I tape the card down. I do all these things that I do to make sure that the card arrives safely. That's my main goal as the seller is to make sure that your card arrives safely because you're not paying for a bent card, are you? Well, Tony might have uh, words otherwise. So the card gets sent out. It takes a few days. He's in North Carolina, and for some reason, it gets stuck in rally for four days. So two days to rally, four days in rally. And I keep in mind, it's still ahead of schedule. Uh, I think you have like 10 days for these to be delivered, and I do next day shipping, so it's still ahead of schedule. But Tony is really mad. He goes, the card's lost. Uh, and I said, I don't think it's lost. I think it's just stuck. You know, USPS is slow sometimes. Um, yeah, be patient, Tony. Sorry. And, you know, he didn't say anything. Uh, and then, yeah, sure enough, the card gets there on day eight. And uh, he says, the card was uh, uh, arrived late. I want a refund. And I said, well, you can return it if you want to. But I can't just give you your money back because... Um, you know, because the card arrived at the latter end of the prescribed um, or <laughs> advertised uh, delivery time. And Tony doesn't like that. And he says, oh, actually, the card's bent. Uh, and I said, okay, well, did you just notice this after you, um, you know, opened the card up and asked for a refund? And he says, what, you don't believe me? Which, that right there, that's when I went to the LinkedIn profile. And if you want to know... He's an assistant manager at a big box store, and this was um, at like 10 a.m. on a Monday. Uh, and the reason I say that and bring it up is because he says, I'm at work right now. I can't, I can't handle this. And I say, okay, well, um, you know, when you get home, just send me a picture of the damage, and I'll file an insurance claim, and it's going to be easy. And he says, I can't believe you don't believe me. I'll have my wife do it. Uh, and then like three seconds later, he sends me a, a, a picture of a, a severely, severely damaged card. And I guess his wife has really, like, you know, worn, worked hands. Um, or he was lying. I don't know. That's, that's what I'm kind of leading into here is he, this is where the lies begin. I don't think he was at work. I didn't call the low, or the, sorry, the place he works <laughs> to see, to see, um, you know, if he was on, I thought about it. That's a little bit too petty, but I thought about it. I didn't call to see if he was working. I'm kind of assuming he's lying and just is trying to say things to get his money back, but maybe I'm wrong. And so the picture he shows me of the card, it looks like someone took the card against the table and just bent it. Just the card, right? So I ship it in an envelope and a top loader and a penny sleeve, and just the card is bent. Tony... Um, I, from my perspective, was too stupid to damage all of the packaging. Um, and then he says, uh, you see, it's damaged. The card is severely damaged. Where's my refund? Uh, and so I guess, it, from, again, my perspective, Tony is just being petty that I won't refund him. And then he accuses me of not believing him about the damage. And because the card wasn't damaged, he just wanted a refund. 
he goes out and to spite himself, he damages the card because now no one is going to have a, a card in, uh, in mint condition. They're going to have a card that is essentially worthless. Uh, and I say, uh, you know, Tony, there's no damage to the top loader or the penny sleeve. Uh, how do you think this happened? And I'm kind of like egging him on. I get it. I'm kind of being bad. But I want him to say stuff because I can already feel uh, negative feedback. And I can already feel chargebacks and, and uh, you know, not as described claims and all of this stuff. And when that happens, you want to have your arsenal of evidence uh, of wrongdoing on the buyer's part. This is, on a side note, why I really don't like selling cheap things. I mean, this is like, you know, 15 bucks, so not that cheap, but still, like, it just seems like the cheaper the stuff is the more likely you are to get people who are going to do just absolutely insane things to try and get their money back. And that's just the way it is, I guess. And he says, well, actually, when I it arrived, the, the envelope was open and it fell out. And that's how it got damaged. And I said, it, it fell out of the, of the top loader. It broke through the tape I put on there. It fell out of the penny sleeve. And it somehow got back into it and arrived to you fine and he goes well someone at ups probably did it or usps probably did it there's thieves everywhere and i'm thinking yeah there are thieves everywhere tony you're preaching to the choir if that's the right if that's the right you know idiom um you're you're, you're telling me there are thieves everywhere i'm talking to one right now uh and his final story ended up being that someone at the post office took the card out of the four by six envelope i sent it in and bent it and put it back in the top loader, which wouldn't make him a thief, by the way, just make him a jerk for damaging someone's property. Uh, unless, you know, yeah, just a jerk basically for damaging someone's property. And then it arrived to him and this story kind of evolved as he went on. I mean, it's just all the classic um, traits of a liar. You know, when someone is constantly changing their story and things don't add up and it's irrational and illogical, that person's probably a liar. And so he says, I don't even want the refund anymore. I just want to prove to you I'm not lying, which again is the kind of thing a liar says. And I said, uh, okay, Tony, I don't, I don't believe you. I think that you bent the card. If you really want to refund, you can send it back to me and I will refund you and I'll file a claim with eBay and I'll say that I thought you're lying because that's the truth. I'm not, I wasn't being rude or I wasn't being, you know, like, um, trying to put them down or something. I'm just saying, this is the way it's going to go. If you, if you really want to do this, here's what's going to happen. It's your call. And so of course he doesn't send the card back. He keeps it. And, um, I get negative feedback and he says, seller is argumentative. Um, and then just some more stuff about the damage of the card. And I'm the argumentative one just because I'm, you know, when someone's lying to me and I don't take their lies at face value, I'm the one who's being argumentative, which is absolutely insane. Uh, and so this has been such a, a common theme for my past few weeks. I get some insane buyer doing some crazy stuff to me. And then I, I talk to eBay and this time on eBay, I get uh, a, a worker, a helper named Andres and Andres was great. Um, he actually was like, yeah, when someone just lies to your face, trying to get money back, it's extremely disrespectful. And I'm thinking, man, that must be your life every single day. You know, Andres, you're doing, you're doing the Lord's work. Thank you. Anybody who works in customer service, um, I'm sure that you just have so many people who lie through their teeth to you. And that's really what owning a business is. A large portion of it, unfortunately, whether you say it is or say it isn't, it's interacting with customers. Um, and that's, you know, paraphrased as customer service in a lot of conversations. And it's just absolutely so insulting when someone just looks at you, or in this case, you know, types at you, and just lies. Because they, they value that $15, or maybe it's just the fact that they need a win in their life. You know, my, I always have these... I go deep and I think, okay, maybe his life is out of control and he just got laid off and he's trying to regain some semblance of control uh, by lying to me and, and, and that way he wins the situation. I don't know. That, that's, you know, a little, little psychoanalysis on Blake's part. Um, but that's what I'm thinking. And Andres agrees with me. 
that Tony is an asshole. I can I can say that now. It's been almost 10 minutes into the video. <laughs> and he uh, says, yeah, we'll get this removed. We're going to mark him as a, a problematic buyer. Uh, you know, thank you for this. And the whole conversation takes about five minutes. And he says, okay, you're going to have the feedback removed in 24 hours. This was on a Thursday. This was, I think, two Thursdays ago. Uh, and um, 24 hours passes. It's Friday. And I'm busy, whatever. I, I don't check. The weekend rolls around. The weekend's when I kind of do some more, like, um, you know, meta work on my business. Look at the feedback. Look at the messages. All that stuff. Do some planning. And I see that my feedback score is still... 99.9%. Hasn't been removed. And so I'm thinking, oh boy. Am I going to get put through the ringer here? Is this, is this going to be an ordeal? Like, thank goodness that I have, um, you know, I have my evidence. I have the uh, absurd path that Tony has taken telling me the litany of lies. The, uh, you know, the, the acts of malfeasance, all the bad stuff. I have the photos. I have the evidence where the top loader, because like I said, in the picture he sent me, maybe I didn't say this, but in the picture he sent me showing the damage, the top loader and the penny sleeve are there in you know perfectly fine condition. I have that. Am I going to have to go through this all again and outline my case all over 15 bucks? Because at a certain point, you know, I know I have my principles. I, I, I don't like to be you know, bullied or, or pushed around. I don't like that. At a certain point, if I'm spending three hours to get back 15 bucks, it's not a very good business decision. And, uh, I call again on Monday and eBay has a 19 minute wait time to talk to someone on the phone, which is what I do. You know, the, the, the chat is just totally useless for me. So I'm waiting 19 minutes and I get a call back and a woman named Maria calls me um, and I explained to her the situation and she says, uh, what are you talking about? And I said, oh boy, oh geez, here we go again. She says, there's no negative feedback on your profile. And I said, oh, oh really? So I guess in the last 19 minutes it had been removed. Uh, it took more than 24 hours, but that was a good resolution to that case. And so I want to know, you know, what do you think? Um, did eBay just pander to me because I complain or was Tony actually uh, a very bad actor.